Animated movies get a bad rap. They're always called cartoons made out to be poor quality. The truth is that modern day animation is as good as most movie studio CGI, and for certain types of stories works even better than the best CGI coming out of Hollywood. Today's movie, The Amazing Maurice, exemplifies what great animation teams can do. The textures on everything look lifelike, the characters are human in the way they move and emote, and there are a lot of fun and hilarious visual gags. The story has funny jokes, clever fourth wall breaks, and is highly entertaining. The cast creates memorable characters out of gag stereotypes, and the soundtrack is handcrafted to fit each moment. The story follows Maurice the talking cat and his band of talking rats. They also have a human named Keith. They travel from town to town running a scam on the people. After setting up shop in a new town called Bad Blints, they uncover a mystery. In Bad Blints, the rats are all gone, but the food is too. The mayor paid the rat catching guild to get the rats, but even after they were all gone, the food still disappeared from under the people's noses. Can Maurice and his friends find out who's taking the food? Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and try to release a new review every day from Monday to Friday. The Amazing Maurice is based on a story written by Terry Pratchett and was adapted into a screenplay by Terry Rosio. It features additional writing material from Robert Chandler and Toby Genkel. Toby Genkel and Florian Westerman co-directed the film, and it stars Hugh Laurie, Amelia Clark, and David Thewlis. There are a lot of positives to talk about with this film, starting with the story. It's fairly standard in length, but goes by quickly. It's got a healthy dose of humor, alongside a fairly easy to follow plot, with a little bit of everything in it. There's a tap dancing rat, a one on one showdown between a commando rat and a murderous chihuahua, and an evil pied piper, complete with his evil forest. All in all, it's exciting and I really enjoyed the Pied Piper scenes. He's so deliciously evil, and the way he walks is super creepy. Like a spider marionette doll. The movie also does a lot of fourth wall breaks to playfully mock the audience, and fill us in on Maurice and Alicia's thoughts. They're a lot of fun. The cast does a great job of bringing the characters to life, with each of them putting a lot of passion and emotion into their performances. Hugh Laurie plays Maurice the Cat, the narrator and lead. He's funny and charming, while still fitting inside traditional myths about cats. He's a scaredy cat who likes to hunt rats, and stands by his friends. He also has nine lives. Amelia Clark plays Melisha, the second half of the narration team and an airheaded tomboy hero. Her brazen know-it-all personality gets on everyone's nerves, but her commitment to daydreaming ends up making her quite likable in the end. She leaps across canyons, picks locks, and knows every single part of a story. David Thewlis plays the antagonist of the film a mysterious being wrapped in a giant trench coat with mittens over his hands, and a scarf covering his face. He commands the rat catcher's guild with an iron fist, but doesn't make much of an appearance until the end of the film. The rest of the cast is no less impressive than the leads, and each puts on a wonderful performance despite their lack of screen time. Shoutouts to Orion Bakari as Dark Tan, and David Tennant who played Dangerous Beans. I've already told you why I appreciate the graphics, so I'll just bring up a scene that I really enjoyed to drive home my point. The fight between Dark Tan and the Chihuahua was fantastic. Dark Tan makes clever use of his martial arts and nail weapons, and turns his size and speed into a massive advantage over the beast. It was a ton of fun to watch. It was better than most modern day action sequences. The soundtrack was made for the movie, and it definitely shows. Each moment has handcrafted music that perfectly captures the essence of the scene and amplifies all the emotions in the moment. It follows each beat to the letter, and works great for the story, but at the end of the day, it isn't very memorable. This brings me to the negatives. The story is jam-packed full of different characters and events, and doesn't have enough time to do something substantial with all of them. A lot of the storylines end up feeling a little shallow. The whole thing with the storybook and Paradise Island kind of just got forgotten, and the whole thing about identity and how the group interacts with the subject was kind of confusing and made the whole acceptance message feel a little weak. The fourth wall breaks were also a little obnoxious at times. They over foreshadowed every moment by having Melisha and Maurice tell you how everything was going to happen. It took all the mystery out of it, and while it shortcutted a lot of the story, it cheapened the emotions a lot. It feels like a fairy tale, and having them explain it just makes that feeling stronger. The fairy tale ending, while clever, should have been set up a little better. The way it plays, it feels like it came out of nowhere. The Amazing Maurice is a kids film that has a lot of good jokes, great visuals, a lot of excitement, and a great cast of characters. It could be a little longer, and they could have fleshed out some of the characters just a little bit more, but it's a fun film that makes for an entertaining watch. 7 out of 10.